Hey there Geeks and Geekettes, I'm the Bearded Geek and I'm going to review Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone because I've never seen it. So, I know it's hard to believe but I am a 30 something year old man and until a few weeks ago, I had never seen the Harry Potter films. Um, the Geeky Heathen, uh, link down below, asked me to watch them and review them because he was interested in seeing a fresh perspective of somebody that missed it the first time around. And I had no interest in the movies until I kept getting Harry Potter stuff in uh, mystery boxes. And my stepdaughter absolutely loves Harry Potter, so all the Harry Potter stuff went to her. Until I got this t-shirt, my stepdaughter is a rather slight girl, a sort of 15 year old girl, and I am the size of a baby gorilla, so t-shirt was going to be mine. Since then, I have Harry Potter top trump cards, and a Harry Potter lamp. Oh, these were kindly given to me by a viewer. Um, obviously this t-shirt I was going to put in a giveaway bundle and I watched the films before I decided what to do with the t-shirt this stuff has come in since I've, I've watched some of the films so let's get on with the review watch the first movie and then the second and then the third in one sitting I went to bed about 3 o'clock in the morning uh, because these are long films they're like 2 and a half hours each film I wasn't expecting that so the reason I didn't watch Harry Potter was because I assumed they were kids' movies and it would be all kiddie wizards swinging the little wands in a sort of a high school and the hero Harry Potter would be all underpowered and weak and feeble and then magically towards the end of the film swing his wand, save the day, job done. I assumed it would be all sort of cutesy. I was very wrong. Um, I was not expecting Harry Potter to be as dark as it was. In places, it was sad. Um, and it, w it was a deep, atmospheric movie. Um, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone is a red-blooded adventure movie. Um, it oozes atmosphere. Um, and it's filled with... Equally brutal, not brutal, equally gruesome and beautiful parts. Um, Chris Columbus directed the movie and obviously he's a massive name in movies and I've enjoyed a lot of the stuff he's done. So why I let this pass me by, I don't know. So the movie is um, it's based on the novels by J.K. Rowling. I haven't read them. Um, but obviously I was thinking cute, cuddly, childish completely completely wrong um, I expected like a sort of wizard Indiana Jones for toddlers and I got a rip-roaring tale of supernatural adventure um, with colorful eccentric characters and they share a world with scary scary creatures like a three-headed dog and a pit of tendrils known as the devil snare um, a two-faced immortal that drinks unicorn blood and I passed on this because it's a kids film so Harry Potter is played by Daniel Radcliffe um, and he starts off as a quite a tragic character I wasn't expecting it um, his parents are murdered when he's a baby he has a baby um, the, 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 somebody attempts to murder him as a baby and leaves the lightning bolt scar on his head. Um, he's then sort of dumped in a basket at his aunt and uncle's house. And they treat the kid like garbage. Um, th th that bad that there's a little cupboard under the stairs. And that's where this kid lives. If somebody knocks the door, he's back in the cupboard and hidden from them. And that that's the sad element of the movie is is how bad harry potter is treated and i really wasn't expecting that um 
And then he keeps getting these letters coming for Hogwarts, but his now sort of adoptive parents keep hiding the letters, throwing the letters away, uh, going as far as to drill plates over the letterbox to stop the letters coming. Eventually, the house gets swamped in these letters. It's like a blizzard of letters hit, hit the house. And his carers are... The douchebags, they're just not nice people. Maybe there's something else to them that I'll see later on in the films, but so far they're just not nice people. So then Harry gets his invitation, and then we get the first glimpse of Hogwarts or the journey to Hogwarts, which is magical in itself. Um, but then we see Hogwarts, and that that first sort of scene of Hogwarts sets the tone for the special effects for the movie. Um, the school is a ominous gothic castle and the corridors, cellars, the Great Hall, it looks like they've made use of real buildings and then heavily CGI'd over the top of them. But it all works. In another story, it might have looked a little silly, but this isn't meant to look real because this is a wizarding school for wizards. And yeah, it was such a thing that... To see and behold for the first time. Um, so obviously Harry's not on his own. He's got two friends and an enemy. Um, his friends are Hermione, 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 Hermione. His friends are Hermione Granger, played by Emma Watson, who really got on my nerves. And that's not a bad thing. That's not the actress. The character was designed to be uptight and get on your nerves. So that little child actress did an amazing job as far as I'm concerned. And then one of my favourite characters um, is a guy called Ron Weasley who's played by Rupert Grint. And he's sort of pluck, luck and untamed talent. He's got a bit of talent but he keeps breaking stuff, making mistakes, blowing things up. And the em enemy is Draco, Draco Malfoy played by Tom Felton. Well, I only know because he was in the Flash. Um, who will do anything and then anything and everything really to be sure that his house is first place at the end of the year because there's four houses. I can't remember what they are right now. They're all on the Slytherin. Oh, I don't know. I can't remember. Muggles are humans. I'm new to this, so give me a break. So then we can move to the adult cast, and the adult cast is a who's who of British actors. It's um, these people play these roles like they really believe it, and for something so ridiculous, it could have looked really bad, and they didn't. Um, Alan Rickman, who I absolutely love in absolutely everything, uh, Dogma, where he plays the voice of God. Uh, obviously the first Die Hard where he plays Hans Gruber um, he even made that Robin Hood film Prince of Thieves enjoyable just because of him hamming it up and so yeah Alan Rickman he sort of draws his words out until they seem like they could slap you in the face and he stay and he sort of does it in his style that we know as Alan Rickman but somehow stays in character it's quite something to watch Maggie Smith, who I've seen in a few things, including a Hook movie, plays Professor Minerva McGonagall. I think I remembered that right. Uh, and she assigns people like Harry to one of the school's four houses, Slytherin. I still can't remember. There's a bird, a fox or a badger and a lion and a snake. Um, and Richard Harris plays the headmaster Dumbledore, whose beard is epic, epic in length. And Robbie Coltrane brilliantly plays the gamekeeper Hagrid. He's one of my favourite characters in this movie as well. Um, he's sort of got a record of misbehaviour in the school and as a way of saying really very important private things and then realising, I shouldn't have said that, in front of the kids. Um, it was great. Once again, great beard. I like beards. So... <laughs> My only complaint or nitpick that I could find with this movie were the Quidditch scenes. Um, they have not aged well. Um, there's rubber-looking 
rubbery looking kids flying around on broomsticks and that did take me out of the story a little bit but this movie's well it's got to be about 18 years old now i imagine when it was released it looked absolutely spectacular um but to sort of counteract that complaint the shape shift in school and the the photographs that come alive and interact with the kids and just the general amazingness of this school it's got me hooked um, i really enjoyed it so i'm not sure how i missed these movies why i missed these movies um probably because i was being like a, a stubborn goth complaining about i was not metal or something um but i genuinely think i've missed out by not watching these movies first time round so for me this movie 9.5 out of 10 easy it it is almost almost perfect um the effects get better in the later movies that i have seen and i can't wait to finish the series and review the entire thing um just what a magical movie what well, uh to take something from print that is I haven't read the books, but I imagine it's very, very hard to take something from print and make it that sort of believable on film. And, and they seem to have done a brilliant job. Just a magical movie. So, guys, that was my review of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Please leave your thoughts and comments down below. Please like, share, subscribe, because it really helps my channel out. So I will be reviewing the other movies. I'm not sure when they'll go up yet because I'm in the middle of changing jobs. And th th these movies are a long watch. And I've, I've got a few more to go, I think. I think there's seven or eight of these movies. So anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm the Bearded Geek. Take care. Bye. <laughs>